Oh, it's Thursday night. Time for our Las Vegas Triathlon Club member spotlight. This is great to have our guest, Anina Duran, on. Hi, Anina. How are you? I'm excited. Awesome. This is going to be so much fun to hear more about your triathlon journey. Uh, we really enjoy doing these spotlights. And co-host Bob Gamble, how are you tonight? I am fine. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Awesome. It's been a couple of weeks, but I'm glad to be back. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Uh, so this is our 2024 edition of our spotlight. And uh, this will be fun to get to know Anina's story uh, for uh, her involvement with uh, triathlon. And I, I, I'm, this is going to be a lot of fun because Anina, I don't know if you're ready to talk about this, Anina, but volunteering for the rock and roll marathon i think we're all covered in chocolate i don't know if you get all the chocolate powder off of you uh but at this point my shoes are still completely covered in chocolate on the bottom yeah uh -huh. it, it was terrible but it was, so, it was terrible and fun at the same time yeah it was <laughs> yeah uh, awesome well uh i'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to bob for the official introduction Okay, thanks, John. And thanks again, Anina, for being on here. This is fun. And one of the reasons we wanted to have, for everybody listening, we wanted to have Anina on was during the Rock and Roll Marathon, as John, you know, the volunteering for it, as John mentioned, we just had a blast. And Anina was central. She was running around, I mean, just doing everything. And she had a smile on her face the entire time. And it was, she was just delightful to work with. And um, so we, we, I asked her right then, I said, will you please be on our spotlight? We have, and I thought we had had her on before and we, and we hadn't. So. But anyway, so welcome, Anina. Thanks so Thank much you. for doing it. Thanks for being this, uh, you know, being on. And, and that was a tremendous amount of fun at the, um, at the Rock and Roll Marathon volunteering. It was, so, yes. And, so everybody knows Anina is an active triathlete with the club, has done races and a uh, very active volunteer very valuable. So um, get us started there, Anita. Tell us your story. You know, how did story. you get in, how did you get involved in triathlon? And um, um, what's my your story, my story is actually kind of a long story. <laughs> so I played sports in high school, soccer, field hockey. Um, I ran track, but that was just to stay in shape for my other sports that I actually loved. And um, at the time, I, at that time, I started having uh, knee problems, pain in my knee. And I saw a doctor and he uh, basically said, if it hurts, just don't do it. Um, and so I ended up, uh, I spent most of my, that was probably like my sophomore year of high school, my senior year, I spent the whole time with braces on, on both knees, like almost around the clock. Um, I lost a lot of like muscle tone and stuff from wearing, you know, the braces all the time. And so by my senior year, I just had to give up sports because they, it was just too hard on my body. Um, and I continued to like be active, you know, my husband and I like hiking and we would do a lot of that kind of stuff, but really no, uh, strenuous More competitive sports. Yeah. Um, for a lot of years. And then probably like 2017, I started having, uh, I started dealing with some depression and a friend of mine suggested that I go for a run for the endorphins. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to, you know, I laced up my 13 year old running shoes and I ran my cul-de-sac and I ran the cul-de-sac next to me and I came home. It was probably like a third of a mile. And I laid on my bed for like 45 minutes because I thought I was going to throw up. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just, that's it. I'm just not a runner. Like, I just can't do it. Um, what, what, what was sports? Um, what did you do in track? Oh, I can't even remember. Just running. Okay. Like, you um, know, I think it was like the 800 or, you know, okay. 1600. Ooh, like, it, I wasn't good at it at all. It was just to stay in shape for the other seasons. Okay. So now uh, you found out that you, uh, you, you, you know, ran out of gas after a third of a mile. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, I was out of gas long, <laughs> long before that third of a mile, but I did push for that third. Um, but yeah, so then a couple more years went by and at the end of 2020, I really, so I had started to put out, I'd started to gain some weight, you know, 2020, so many of us did. And I was like, okay, I don't want to change my diet 
so I guess I have to exercise. <laughs> like, I know it's one or the other, and I don't want to change this. Um, so I downloaded like the couch to 5k app and I just started running like on that. I didn't even like tell my family that I was going to do it because I didn't want to start and fail and have, you know, anything like that. So I started running a little, little by little and, uh, I did okay. Well, what, and, what about your knees? Um, so I, for like maybe the first month or so I didn't have a problem. Uh, I was still running like pretty short distances. I didn't have a problem. And then after a while I did again, and I had a friend who, uh, she runs marathons. She's amazing. And so I talked to her and I was like, Hey, what do you think I should do here? Like, if it's just, I need to build up strength. I'm willing to put the time in. I'm willing to put in the effort if I just have to like build up, you know, strength. Mm -hmm. But if I'm doing damage, I don't want to just keep going. Right. And so uh, she recommended that I go get fitted for running shoes because apparently like my 13 year old shoes were not doing me justice. <laughs> you had a couple um, of couple of boards of plywood strapped on the bottom of your feet. Oh, yeah, they were all worn out. And, I mean, it was really <laughs> bad. Um, and then she lent me a book also uh, about running and like um, how to run like, you know, like even body placement stuff, like what to think about, uh, you know, not to lean forward and just like all kinds of stuff. And so um, when I was actually, so I got fitted for running shoes at Red Rock Running Company. And while I was there and beforehand, I'd done a little research about this problem that I had with my knee, which they had said was called patella femoral syndrome. So like basically my kneecap doesn't <laughs> go the way it's supposed to. Um, and so a lot of people had success with a band, a patella band. Um, and I didn't want to do braces because I'd done that before and had lost muscle from that. And so I didn't want to do that. But um, I, I bought a band when I bought my shoes. And from then on, like things were great. Um, no problems when I was running. So I continued running a little bit, a couple months maybe. And then another friend of mine in this, like, there's like this female kind of empowerment group where they were doing this. It was a hundred mile challenge mm -hmm. and you could do it over any length of time. Some people would do it in a week. Some people did six months, you know, it was just having a hundred intentional miles of exercise. Anything you wanted to do could be hiking, oh, biking, so swimming. Okay. Um, and so she was like, I want to sign up for this. Does anybody want to sign up for it with me? And I was like, that sounds awesome. I'd love to do that. And so I made the goal that I wanted to get my 100 miles done in one month. And so I was running on the days I was running. I think I was running like three or four days a week. And then uh, I decided to add in biking for the other days because it's really easy to get a lot of miles in biking. <laughs> and I wasn't that fast of a runner. So even on my runs, I was only doing like two miles. Um, and so I was just alternating between biking and running and, uh, you know, did a couple like five K's with my kids or something in there. And so I started to kind of like rack up these, you know, the little medals that you get when you do a 5k. Right. And I was looking online for a DIY rack to hang my medals. And this, I came across this site where a, a wife had made one for her husband and he did triathlon. And so that's how I found it. And he had done sprint distances. And so like she said, like, this is how long he does on this. This is how long he does on that. And I was like, I, I can do that. This. <laughs> I mean, I'm already running and biking. I could, and like, you know, I was that's like, fun. I could learn how to swim. I could do this. Um, and so like, I made a goal that that's what I wanted to do. I knew how to swim, like jump in a pool and not die, but I didn't know anything, um, about, you know, racing technique, like actual, you know, strokes, breathing, like all of that kind of stuff. Um, and so I commented in the club and I got some recommendations and, uh, I hired coach Mel and all right. And so she worked with me on learning yeah. how to swim. And um, so 
Yeah, that's. I love this. I, what a great story. And I, I like that it, it took you a while to find triathlon, but you found it through this this mechanism of, of uh, doing the running and doing the 5Ks and, and, and getting the medals. And I love that story. I want to say that I really appreciate you bringing up the issue of depression, which is real for a lot of people and exercise can help. And so I'm really glad that you, one, you brought that up and then you continued on your path with, uh, with getting involved with running and then adding bike. And I love the hundred mile challenge and doing this by, oh, well. you know, having a group of people around you, your friends, uh, that's pretty neat to, to have that community. So what, what a neat story. So when, when did you do your first triathlon then, or how did you get into, um, the first triathlon? Um, okay. Well, so I joined the club in 2022, um, probably like right about this time, like, you know, March when you guys are doing mm -hmm. new membership stuff. So I joined then and I went to my, my first thing that I went to was the Corn Creek bike ride. Um, Excellent. and it was, <laughs> I was still riding my, I think it was a seven speed bike oh, that I, I got at a garage sale yeah. for $10. Yeah. And, um, I was so nervous about going and I was like, everybody's going to, you know, be so much better than me and they're going to have all the right gear. And like, I'm going to just, I'm just going to be there like this. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, but I went and it's totally true everyone else took off and i was like working as hard as i could and john you rode next to me and you were like talking to me but i mean like i'm watching everybody else i'm pedaling like as hard as i can and they're like barely working and they're so much because you know their bikes were so much better um so that was fun but it was okay like you know i i was a brand new beginner like my very first thing and i had to remind myself i was like okay these people are actual iron men and i'm <laughs> on my first day like we all have to start somewhere and so it was okay and everyone was super nice like nobody made fun of me they weren't like get off the road or anything um so it was a good experience and then um let's see so my first triathlon that i did was actually uh santa barbara triathlon um and i don't know why i picked that as my first one i think i saw like an ad for it and the distances seemed really doable and so i was just like yeah like that's the one that's the one i'm gonna do um i did so it was like in august so i volunteered at one of our club Obviously. triathlons beforehand um and it was an invaluable experience for me because I was actually able to see firsthand how a race works, you know, how transition works. And for a brand new beginner, it was wonderful because I saw other people making mistakes. Gotcha. There were other people that, you know, they would come and between transition, you know, they would take off on the run and then realize they forgot their water bottle and they would come back and they would get it and then they would go. And there were people that... They, they remember hard... they had their helmet on or something like yeah, that. Yeah, didn't have their helmet on or had a hard time clipping in on the bike or actually fell on the bike. And I was just like, okay. These are my people. It's okay. <laughs> like, because I think, you know, I am a person that puts a lot of pressure on myself on how I look and, you know, like, like to not embarrass myself in front of others. And so I think going into my first triathlon, I was nervous about like, Am I going to do it right? And then, I mean, like you read the rules and there's so many rules and it's like, you can't be behind this person for that long on the bike. And you, you know, if you're going to pass, you have this many seconds. And I was just like, how am I going to do all of this? How am I not going to make mistakes? And so seeing other people make mistakes and then it was fine, helped me have more confidence going into that race. Um, so that was my first triathlon. Was that your question? Did I even kind yeah, of answer no, that? <laughs> I, I love that. And, and I love that you volunteered and you saw these are just real people doing it. It's not these, you know, people that are on magazine covers or on TV. I mean, it's just 
real people and we all make mistakes and we we all you know sometimes break rules but uh, we all work through it so that, that i love that and so santa barbara caught your eye and and you signed up for that now you're originally from california right i am i'm from the central coast so monterey um yeah. but i have a lot of family like all up and down yeah. um the coast. So I actually got to stay at like my aunt's house, my aunt and uncle, uh, they let me stay at their house. And so we just kind of popped over. It was like maybe half an hour away. So I did have to get up pretty early to, yeah. <laughs> to so get up there. But when you're getting ready for the triathlon, anything in particular that you said, I want to prepare this? Um, I really just wanted to be able to finish it. <laughs> that was my whole goal. If I come in last place, that's fine because I did it. Yeah. Um, so I really just wanted to finish it. Um, I think that I'm the not tri not traditional triathlete because the swim is my favorite part uh, and the go. bike is my least favorite part. And I think for most triathletes, they're strong in the Other bike, you know, it's the, it's the biggest part. It's the longest distance. Yeah. So like, if you're good at that, like, you know, and the swim, it's like, it's okay if you're not great at it because it's so short, like it'll be over. Um, but so I actually, I felt really confident with my swim, uh, going into it. And, you know, I had done a ton of open water swims out at the lake with like Mel's group, um, like all, you know, all spring and summer leading up to it. So I felt really comfortable in the open water. I have no issues with that. But I was really shocked uh, at my first triathlon, the Santa Barbara, because the water was so cold mm. compared to what I had been training here at the lake. You know, at the lake, our water was 80 degrees in August. And then I got there and it was 61 degrees. And like, I was just, yeah. I really struggled in the swim. And I had thought that it would go so well because um, I, I'm comfortable with that. But I just like, man, anytime I put my face in the water, I couldn't breathe. And um, it also could have been just the adrenaline and, you know, pushing myself too far on like, my, you know, because it was my first one. So I really, I don't know. Is that, is that an whole, ocean swim? It was an ocean swim. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the, another dimension there. Wow. I, but, you know, I mean, I did grow up in the ocean. I don't have, uh, I don't have a lot of issues with that. I, my guess is it would be between the cold and just first time racing uh no. just issues with that so going into it i thought the swim would be great and it was really really hard mm. uh the bike was fine the run was glorious because it was like right along the beach and it was no. all perfectly flat and it was like 60 degrees outside no. <laughs> where we'd been running and you know in august it was hot here so i mean <laughs> i love that run i was like man this is awesome <laughs> and so that was at the end of august so i came home and then i signed up to do the las vegas try um which was just mm -hmm. a couple months later and i was going into it i was like okay i want to have a better swim experience i want to do better on the swim because that's really where i felt like i struggled the first time around um and so i did i pretty much came and had like an opposite experience i did great on the swim the bike was fine you know just kind of mediocre there and then the run i was so hot and tired i like i walked way more of it than what i wanted to at all um but i did it i completed it and um you know my kids were there my family all came out to to see me and we i got my medal we packed up we left we came home i was home like maybe two hours and then mel texted me and she was like excuse me do i see a podium for you and i was like <laughs> no way oh, there's wow. no way How and cool. then i looked up and i had <laughs> had gotten oh, third place wonderful. And I totally just left and I didn't even think, you know, I thought I'd done so poorly on the run that I, there was no way I had. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, there's yeah, another mistake. <laughs> it is. You know, you realize, uh, oh, and you know, this, this conversation is so perfect for first timers. We're probably going to make it required watching for the, for new, 
for new people. I love All the things said. not to do? Don't no, no, no. without there, looking? <laughs> oh, no. There are so many things that were really cool about what you said. You learned so much whenever you did the volunteer and you watched everybody coming out of the water, doing their transition, making mistakes getting on their beach cruisers and their, their mountain bikes, you know, from, from, you know, Walmart. And, and yeah, we got some people with, with a lot of fast bikes, but we got everybody. And that's, uh -huh. that's really cool that you learned that and, you know, and, and picked it up and carry this forward. And that's what I wanted to get into next. How, how do you like, you know, the, the club and being with the club and you like, you love working with people, obviously from, from my experience with you at, at the, the rock and roll marathon. Tell me about you know how you how you like being in the club and, so and actually, working with the folks in the club. I'm uh, not. I'm actually like a pretty shy person. No, um, I don't feel like I. <laughs> I don't feel like I make connections really easily, and so volunteering is an easier way for me to mm. get to know other people. You know, showing up at a social and just like. Hey, I'm going to sit down next to you at a restaurant and talk to you for the next two hours is not a situation that I'm like real comfortable with. Um, I don't know that anybody is, but go, yeah, go ahead. And so volunteering, you know, uh, the, when I volunteered at the, the triathlon, I got to sit at the welcome table, you know, the sign in table with somebody mm -hmm. else. We chatted the whole time. I got to talk to the people as they came up. It was like, oh. they had a reason to come up and talk to me. And so, um, it made it a little easier and same thing like at the uh, rock and roll marathon like just standing next to someone serving a drink like it's easier for me to get to make that connection um as opposed to just like putting myself out there and being like hey we're friends now i guess <laughs> yeah. hi how's the weather yeah <laughs> you know yeah. It's like hi here's a piece here's a cup of chocolate and they go thank you so much yeah, yeah this is good so um, I guess I guess volunteering is the best way that I've found to make those connections in the group. Okay, now we're going to capture that too, because you know, <laughs> we we need volunteers all the time, and that makes you a, a most valuable player here. Well, and I'll, I'll just add, I love this because you're talking about getting yourself out out of your comfort zone, and a lot of times we think of triathlon as getting out of our comfort zone. But I like how you're even approaching this as getting into volunteering as getting out of that comfort zone. And, you know, we're, we're, we're always trying to use this sport to, you know, build ourselves and, and, you know, bring value to our lives. So that that's wonderful that you're doing that. Thank you. And I, I think it's, you know, it's interesting. You are so easy to talk to and so easy to have a conversation with. It's just, it's just, it's, just remarkable that you say well i don't really feel comfortable doing that i'm thinking i beg to differ with you I mean, thank so, you <laughs> so tell us about some more of uh, the races you've done after santa barbara and the uh, las vegas triathlon uh, what, what 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 else have you checked off your list of uh, of things to do triathlons or races all together because i have done um it's the last year i did the hundred hundred swim event oh wonderful and I did the rock and roll half marathon last year. Yeah. Um, so those were two other races that I did. Yeah. And then I took a couple months off um, because one, so I am a person that likes to set goals and work to accomplish them. Uh, that's one of the reasons that triathlon kind of spoke to me is it was like this goal that I could work towards. Um, another goal that our family has is so I, I have three children and my husband and I have a goal that we want to take them to all 50 states before they graduate. Oh, how cool. So um, last year, March, April, we took, two, well, I took two months off and uh, took my kids on a 9,000 mile road trip around the country. And so Wonderful. I did some I did some swimming. I did some running. Uh, I maybe like did some bikes in some of the hotel, you know, gyms. But um, a lot, a lot of time, I just took off for those couple months while we traveled. Um, and then I came back and I did the Las Vegas try again, but I did the Olympic distance that time. So, what did you think of that? Um, because that, that's not an easy course, Olympic course. 
It is not. It was not easy. Uh, I had a, a whole bunch of different feelings. The swim I thought was awesome. Um, I like the longer distance swim. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, I love I love the swim part. Um, and then the bike, I uh, probably like the first 18 miles, I was like, this is awesome. I could totally do this. Like, I'm going to sign up for more of these. And then the last couple of miles, I was like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Why did I think I could do this? And then I still have to run when this is over. Um, and then I got back and, you know, that run last year, it was a whole mile uphill right at the start. And I was just like, this was a bad idea. Um, but same thing. I finished it. I did it. I actually got first in my age group. So no way. That was awesome. Very exciting. And I stayed and checked. And so I, I got to go on the podium. <laughs> you got on the podium. I learned my mistake the year before. And so as soon as I finished the race, my kids were there and they were like, go find out, oh, go yeah. find out. Oh. So. Oh, I love it. I I really love this idea of doing that, you know, taking your, your kids to every state and, and boy, taking that trip sounds amazing. And I'm glad you brought up being a mom because doing triathlon and balancing family life is not always easy. So maybe talk a little bit about, about how you go about balancing those two things. Um, it has been not easy. So um, I have twin girls that are 14 and then I have a son who's 12. Up until this past year, I we homeschooled them all the way along. Uh, so they were home when I started training um which maybe made it a little easier they were so they were probably like 12 and 10 at that point they'd had a, a number of years in homeschool to you know feel comfortable with it and so really i would just kind of give them their school to do for the day and then i would take off and i would go do a run or i would go for a bike ride or i would go for a swim and then i'd come back and they'd have done their work and then we would go through it together uh, so that made it a little easier this year two of them decided to go to school so i have two in school one homeschool which it makes it more difficult honestly because there's drop off times and you know pick up and i can't just go for a run at you know, seven o'clock in the morning when I might want to, because I either have to get up extra early to be back to take them to school on time, or I have to go later in the day, which then it's hotter and I don't want to run mm. six, eight miles when it's that hot out, you know? Um, so that part has been more difficult and it's just, you know, trying to schedule in when those mm. workouts can happen. Um, luckily I have a husband, he's really supportive. And so he helps out whenever he can, you know, he'll try to plan to be home on a day that he can take them to school and I can go for a longer run or, um, you know, whatever the case may be. But, um, I do, you know, one cool thing about being a mom, especially so my twins that are 14, they're girls and I love being able to model a healthy lifestyle for them that I'm not, it's not, okay, I have to go to the gym because I ate this tub of ice cream last night. It's not a punishment for what, you know, what I ate, what I eat fuels my body to help me do the things that I want to accomplish. And, um, I like showing them, you know, what a strong body can do. And the other fun part of that is they've been here for every step of my journey. Yeah. They were there that day. I ran that third of a mile and came home and said, I'm not a runner. I can't, you know, I can't run these two cul-de-sacs without thinking I'm going to throw up. But then they were also there when I crossed the finish line at a half marathon, you know? And so mm. they saw. Oh, so, so huge. They, they see both what, you know, what I couldn't do all of the work that went into it and then what I could do at the end. And so it's been a really cool mm. um, experience to be able to model that for them. And just hopefully it's a good, a good lesson. And oh, good grief. It sounds fantastic. Also. And, and since you talked about that journey, you know, from start to finish and your, your daughters have seen that from start to finish, 
what in that journey has surprised you or have, you know, like, did you not expect? And, and what, what have you, what, what, what have you learned? And what you can mention here is going to be really valuable to people who are also just getting started. Well, what I learned is that I could run more than a, a third of a mile. <laughs> there you go. I really could. Um, I think, you know, just the, the small steps of it, you know, I didn't go from one to the next right away. And uh, like I said, you know, I had downloaded the Couch to 5K app and... Um, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't. And like with that app, I mean, it, it, you start out small. It's like run one minute, walk a minute, run, you know, two minutes, walk two minutes, run two minutes, walk one minute. And so like it would build up. And um, honestly, it took me like a long time to really be able to run a longer distance. I think I was still running too hard on those short times. Um, you and 90% of everybody else who did, has done that. I just, like, I would need, I, I, the t last 10 seconds of it, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I just need it to be over. And, um, you know, like, I had, uh, <laughs> you know how Facebook, like, suggests groups for you sometimes? And it's like, oh, you know, based on your activity, we think you might want this group. Well, Facebook suggested I might want to join this group called Slow Runners Community. And I was like, thanks, <laughs> thanks. for the burn, Facebook. Yeah. But also, yeah, I do want to join that group. <laughs> um, and so I did. And, uh, you know, I was kind of looking for advice, support, whatever. And I said, I'm really having a hard time getting past this, like, you know, where I can run for like a longer distance. And somebody in the group asked me, they said, well, what is it that's making you need to stop? Is it your legs are sore? Is it you're out of breath? Is it, you know, what, what is making you need to stop? And I was like, I don't know. And so my next run, I went out and I just kept running. Um, and like, I, I, it was only like five minutes, but I ran the whole time, like, listening to my body for what was telling me I needed to stop. And it wasn't anything. It was my head that was telling me. No I way. Needed to okay. stop. Like physically I could do it, but in my head, I would just been like kind of conditioning myself, telling myself I couldn't. And so at the end of that five minutes, I mean, I remember I was running at the park right by my house and I was running around and that timer went off for five minutes. And I said out loud, I did it. Wow, <laughs> like, it's great. so silly. It's so, it's so silly, but that's a good surprise. I was proud of myself that I could. And the next time I went, it was eight minutes. And the next time I went, it was 10. And I really had the endurance there. I had built it up, wow. but my head was mm. telling me that I didn't. And so, um, that was just, I guess, a, a cool experience for me. And, um, I carry that through as I keep thinking, I can't run eight miles. I can't run 10 miles. I can't do a half marathon, yeah. but mm. I can't, you know, like I mm. just. And, and wonderful, uh, your, wonderful message. The proof is what you've accomplished. And I really like this. I mean, you started by saying in 2017, you just started that run, but little by little, you just knocked down these barriers and, and kept, you know, showing that you, that you could do it. Uh, so just a, a fantastic story. Anina, this has been so great. And I really like the, the story of you balancing family life and, and, uh, and triathlon. That's so important. And the flexibility that you have in your training seems to be really uh, so important to, to being able to adjust as you need. Uh, and so it's great, great to hear that and, and, and hear where you are. So this is this has been wonderful. Can I? We told you we'd keep you for thirty minutes, but we're we're over that. We're already over it. Yeah, this is just so great. To, no, no, it was that. Yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. And actually, we we're going to have to have an Anina part two because we didn't cover everything we wanted, you know. And there and you're so interesting to talk to. We're going to have you on again. Well, I can't say that, but it it would be it's it's like I said, it's it it has gone wonderful. You know, for like for thirty minutes. This is a this is as Bob Bob has said be you know during the, during this talk is a good one for people to hear, getting involved and the steps that you took to uh, to do that and do it successfully. So this has just been fantastic. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank yeah. you for having me. Oh, uh, this has been fun. All right, thanks everybody. All right, good night. <laughs>